Hello, my name is Jude Pullen. I was one of five of the team members of Team Faraday, um, who was part of Design Spark and Practical Action's Power Hack Days. We were looking at initiating local power generation businesses in developing countries. So we started off by looking at the challenge of uh, generating electricity. And we were quite quick to realize that essentially huge innovations had been made uh, from moving from mains powered electricity to LEDs for sources of light. However, one of the things really caught our attention was a method that didn't use any electricity at all. This was Alfred Moser's uh, liter light, which took uh, two liters of water, added a couple of capfuls of bleach to it, which changed the chemistry in such a way that when you mounted it halfway in, halfway out of your roof, uh, it would take some light, bounce it around, and effectively make it glow like a 60 watt light bulb. So we thought this was pretty incredible for your daylight, however we thought not so good for your nightlight. And we wondered whether we could actually improve on his incredible design by incorporating an LED into the bottle so that you get a nightlight. One of the things that we're also keen to take a little bit of a step back from is realize could we not just provide aid for developing countries and third world countries, but could we actually initiate small sustainable businesses so that ultimately these businesses could become independent of the aid organizations? Bit of a tall order, I know, um, and a complicated one, but something that we wanted to try and discuss anyway. One of the things that struck us was that although we were busy on a hack day using all sorts of fancy tools, we were aware not to sort of neglect the incredible ingenuity and uh, innovation that's already in many developing countries, born out of necessity, but also out of just sheer pleasure and fun. So as you can see from some of these toys, uh, although they're pretty fun, they obviously require some real dexterity and talent to be able to deliver things like that. So we wanted to harness that sort of innovation and local talent to create livelihoods where, for example, people could uh, collect uh, cans and bottles for recycling, whether money could exchange hands for doing those sorts of jobs, which would then meant those resources could be passed on to the people who could really get the most out of those materials. And for the sake of uh, the project that we were proposing, if they're able to use a power hub or a sort of generator, a little bit like a dynamo and a bike, to create turbines, either using wind or water power, so that you could generate your LED power for your Moser light. So we broke down these into sort of a schematic of basically saying you'd need to develop a housing, the generator, again, a little bit like a dynamo, as I mentioned, and some sort of hub that would allow you to mount either tin cans, which are folded up into turbine blades, or using the screw cap fixture of uh, two litre water bottles that could be used as a, a sort of water wheel. So as you can see, this is sort of showing the duality that not only using wind power, but also water power. Um, one of the things we realized is obviously if these two things stopped or were unavailable, you would still have the ability to hand crank this and give uh, extra power generation that way in, in a time of need. So we're calling this the Moser Light Evolution, uh, obviously still wanting to give a huge amount of credit to the initial innovation, but realizing that by potting, effectively just gluing in a LED so that it's waterproof and shielded from the, the bleach water mix into the bottle cap, we could also combine this with a 12 volt battery which could be trickle charged so that you could use it during the night. So we're aware that by doing some very crude uh, rough calculations that potentially you could use either the wind or the water powered uh, wheels, probably at different gear ratios, but these are the sort of things we'd need to work out. But let's say if you manage to generate three hours of power generation, that would probably provide you with approximately three hours light, bearing in mind that you're not actually awake all of the night usually, so we don't need to be quite as constrained in that respect. So some of the statistics that were pretty basic that we realized that we did look at user, using mobile phone batteries and although these give perfectly adequate power generation, uh, it, it appears from what we've heard from practical action that actually car batteries are far more common and easy to come by and also it's worth acknowledging that if a car battery is useless for uh, powering your car, it might still be perfectly good for powering your LED lights. So going back to the, the power hack day, uh, the first day we spent taking apart a load of stuff. As you can see, there's a gear train from the wind-up torch that we had. 
Um, it's sort of thing that Trevor Bayliss probably invented. And uh, as you can see, we're mounting in our LEDs to the bottle cap and we've got a nice picture of it lighting up, uh, obviously in daylight, so it is quite a lot brighter at night. Um, you can see on the second day that we moved into really having our first attempt at working with uh, soda cans and folding the aluminium. Again, we're probably nowhere near going to be as skilled as the people who've been doing this for some time, but we kind of wanted to make sure that we could, you know, prove the concept as it were. So as you can see, we're also working up uh, the, the scheme in uh, CAD which was using DesignSpark mechanical software and this allowed us to 3D print something. Now naturally you wouldn't 3D print this uh, in the long term, you probably need something injection molded or something that's going to get the cost down to make it a lot cheaper. Either way, this is the proof of concept and as you can see this is Richard mounting what would be a water wheel and as you can see the torque is pretty low given that he's able to push it around with his finger. Um, and you can see that it's switching on the roof light and also, let's say, a desk light if you prefer. So naturally this could be switched out to work with uh, wind power as well. So there's some interesting concepts there. So again, this was, this was about us sort of trying to kickstart something, but really we're under no illusions that this, uh, <laughs> this is something that is a much bigger uh, piece of the puzzle still to be filled in. And if you were to look at the development roadmap, the power hack day is really only one of many, many pieces that needed to be considered. For a start, we'd need to look at costing down the whole, uh, the whole mechanics of the thing for the water generation or wind generation hubs. There might be different gear ratios involved in all these sorts of things. But aside from the, the technical and academic sides, this is why we're wanting to work with companies like Practical Action because, let's face it, there is going to be huge difficulties uh, not just in training people how to get the best out of this sort of technology but also avoiding things like corruption and then getting into the wrong hands. So really this is the, the, the first step in uh, a road that has many, many challenges along the way. However, with you know support, this might be something that we can get quite a long way. So thank you very much for looking and please take a look at the blogs and links uh, associated with this and uh, we'll keep you posted on how it goes. Thank you very much.